Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue our new mini-series on moisture and temperature effects on webs and rolls. In previous clips, we showed the many, many ways that these ordinary environmental conditions affect your products and your processes. In this clip, we discuss how long it takes for moisture and temperature to do their thing. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Scientists use the time constant of a system as a great way to describe how long it takes to get most of the way to where it is going, given sufficient time. One time constant most of the way is 63%. After two time constants, the system is 87% of the way, and after four time constant, the system is pretty much there at 98% of the way. If we are going to apply this idea to moisture on paper, we need one more bit of information. Perhaps surprisingly, it is not paper grade. Rather, it is a big the paper object is. Small things are quickest to equilibrate, big things take longer. So the quickest time constant is for a thin single sheet of paper exposed on both sides to air. The time constant for that sheet or web is about one minute. Thus, when TAPI specifies conditioning of samples prior to testing for seven minutes, that is pretty conservative. These values have immense importance to designing processes, designing test procedures, and for troubleshooting. For example, we know that while running paper on a web machine, the paper web simply does not have time to change moisture in the transit between the unwind and the rewind. That changes when the machine is stopped. When there is plenty of time for the paper to change moisture and thus change length, width, and so on. That mere winder stopping event in turn is a major cause of at least two defects. One is called the splice offset, and another is the slitter blade breaks. Thin film is much faster to cool, perhaps seconds, depending on how thin it is. That means that thin film may cool just going between the rollers if the speed is low enough, but not so much at higher speeds. If the object is bigger than a sheet of paper, say a fiber core, or a paper towel roll, or a bathroom tissue roll, all have similar area to weight ratios. The time constant is about one day. Shipping rolls of paper, say one meter in diameter by one meter wide, have time constants of about one year. That makes sense if you think about it, how long it takes a tree trunk to dry out when it is cut, because it is also made of cellulose and also has a roughly similar density and area of paper rolls. Again, temperature is much faster. Hot shipping rolls tend to cool within a number of hours, again depending mostly on how big the roll is. At the far extreme, a master roll of metal foil, say two meters in diameter by two meters wide, may take days or even a couple of weeks to cool, one time constant. However, the story is not just about time. It is also about distribution, particularly when you look at wound rolls. In the short upcoming clip, we model the distribution of moisture, temperature, or solvents in a wound roll with time. They all follow fixed law diffusion. 
So these quite different products will all have a similar time-dependent distribution. If it helps you to visualize for your paper product, think of black as being wet and white as dry, as the initially wet paper roll dries out. This would apply to rolls as small as bathroom tissue as well as large master rolls. The physics of distribution are the same, only the time constant is different. Alternatively, if you make film, rubber, or metal, you might think of black as being cool and white as being hot, as the hot film roll cools. Again, the physics of Fick's Law are independent of moisture and temperature and chemistry. What we see in this upcoming animation or simulation is a cross-section of a roll. The core is running horizontally and the wound rolls have the left and the right hand sides of this picture. The animation shows the wetting, cooling, or whatever of a wound roll with time over about two time constants. If you wish, you can run your own simulation with the free wound roll diffusion calculator by Abbott App. Okay, get your popcorn and let's run the 60 second clip. Please excuse the graininess of the film. I made this more than 35 years ago, which in its time was the first such use of computer simulation and animation for conference presentations in the web industry, at least that I'm aware of. Another mechanism for changing stresses and strains in a roll of paper after it is wound is due to changing moisture, also known as hygroscopic diffusion. In this computer simulation, we will see the drying of a paper roll. 200 days of drying will be shown in two minutes on the cross-section of the roll. To the right is a moisture scale with blue representing wet and black representing dry. Paper is a hydrophilic material, which means it has an affinity for absorbing water. Additionally, paper has a large coefficient of hygroscopic expansion. For these reasons, small changes in the moisture content of paper will result in large changes in stresses and or strains. Paper taken from the paper machine reel has a moisture level which is not necessarily in equilibrium with its environment. Dry paper will take on and wet paper will give up moisture until it reaches hygroscopic equilibrium. This equilibrium moisture content level varies with paper grade and environmental relative humidity. As can be seen from this simulation, the roll dries inward from its exposed surfaces, which include the face, the outer surface, and the core. This rate of drying slows with time as the driving force, which is the moisture difference between the surface and the interior points, is decreased. The details of paper roll drying are affected by the type of wrapping, whether it be plastic film or craft paper, the header, the core, whether it be fiber or steel, and the way it is stacked in the warehouse. Because paper is so sensitive to environmental moisture, care must be taken to dry the paper uniformly on the paper machine to a level that is in equilibrium with its subsequent environments. Additionally, wrapping, stacking, and warehousing must minimize non-uniform drying or wetting. Both wetting and drying cause considerable disruption in the paper roll structure. In the next simulation, we will see how the drying of a roll of paper affects its shape and its stresses. Looking at the same roll cross-section, we see it change shape as it contracts non-uniformly during drying. The intermediate shape for a drying roll is barrel-shaped, which will cause the roll to have a baggy center when unwound. The intermediate shape for a wetting roll is hourglass shaped, which will cause the roll to have baggy edges when unwound. The effect of non-uniform moisture is equally profound on roll stresses. 
drying the outer layers of a roll by 1% moisture will increase the tangential stresses by 225 pounds per square inch and add 14 tons of radial squeeze over the surface of a typical roll. Though we have covered a lot of material in the last 15 minutes, the concept I would like you to go home with is this. Paper stress, as opposed to hardness or tension, is a fundamental roll structuring parameter that gives us a unified, consistent, and quantitative description of winding. We can improve the winder process by reducing roll defects resulting from poor paper stress profiles. Conversely, we can determine the limitations of winding that result from the inviolate laws of physics of the process. Paper stress can give us a new insight into winding. There are four starting points for a more detailed description of moisture and temperature effects and how they change with time. The first is the 30-year-old article that I wrote while employed in paper research that still resonates today. The laws of physics have not changed much since then, and the extensive bibliography is a great starting point for scholars of the subject. David McDonald of Papercan, now FP Innovations, verified and added to this model by incorporating outer packaging as an insulator for moisture migration. The second resource is the wound roll diffusion calculator by Abbott App, which is based on my above paper. Here you can quite easily run your own models for moisture or temperature for your own wound rolls. The third is the must-have 750 page web handling handbook written by myself Tim Walker and Dylan Jones. Last but not least is my award-winning and trademark Web 101 class that has been taken by about 5,000 people just like you. Here you will learn how to use material properties and the laws of physics to understand web behavior and web misbehavior. Thank you so very much for joining me in this Moisture Matters mini-series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will begin a new mini-series titled Data Disasters or Measurement Miasma. The first in this series will be on moisture and temperature measurements. We'll have a lot of fun with this new series, so subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comments section below. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. See you next time.